I've reviewed the Canon 6D, which I borrowed from Lumoid.com. I did a quick review and a longer, more in-depth review, but now it's time to get down to the mechanics of the camera. In this video, I'll take you on a tour of the body, show you all of the buttons and dials, and talk about what they do, and also walk through the menus. I'll talk about every single item and at least a little bit about what it does. Let's start with the body tour. Starting on the front of the body, we have the name badge with the microphone under it. This is the lens release button and here's your lens. I have a 40 millimeter f2.8 pancake lens on right now. Over here is the depth of field preview button. This is the remote control sensor and this is the self timer lamp. It flashes when you're using the self timer. Down here is the DC coupler cord hole. This is where the cord comes out of the battery compartment when you use DC power. Which brings us to the bottom of the camera, where you see the battery compartment. And then this is the tripod socket. Now on this side of the body is the card slot. This camera takes one SD memory card. You can also see the mount for the strap. Moving to the other side of the camera, you can see the other strap mount, and also the microphone. These doors open so that you can get to the different ports that you might need. You have the audio video out, the HDMI out, an external microphone in, which is nice because it means that you can use an external mic when shooting video on this camera. And you also have the remote control terminal. Now on the top of the body. On this side is the mode dial. When you press this lock release button and turn the dial, you can move through the 60s different modes. This is the power switch. In the center is the hot shoe. And over on this side is the shutter release button and the main dial. Then this row of buttons, which you use in combination with the dials to make changes to how the camera operates. You have autofocus operation, drive mode, ISO sensitivity, metering mode, and a button that will illuminate the LCD panel right here. In the LCD panel, you see many of your camera's current settings. And then this is the focal plane mark. Moving to the back of the camera, starting right in the middle, this is the LCD monitor. Over here is the multi-controller with the set button in the middle. The multi-controller spins around like a wheel and also tilts in eight directions like buttons. You use these for a lot of things, like to navigate and make selections in the menus or move through your photos in playback. You also use these in combination with other buttons on the camera body to make changes to settings. Beneath that is the multi-function lock switch. This locks the main dial in the top of the camera, the quick control dial, and the multi-controller from moving. This can be handy if you don't want them to move around inadvertently and possibly change a setting. Over here is the access lamp. This tells you when the memory card is being accessed. Don't remove the card while this is illuminated. Moving up, this is the playback button, which will bring your photos up on the LCD monitor. Above that is the index slash magnify slash reduce button. When in playback, after you hit this button, you can use the main command dial to zoom in to the image on screen or zoom out and even view thumbnails of several images on screen. Here's the quick control button. When you hit this button, a bunch of your settings come up on the LCD screen. You can then move through those settings and make changes using the multi-controller and set buttons. This allows you to quickly see how you have your camera set and make changes to some of the most commonly used settings. Moving up is the live view and movie switch and button. If switched to the camera and you press the button, you'll be ready to take still photos in live view. If switched to the movie camera and you press the button, you'll be set up to shoot movies in live view. This is the AF on button, then the auto exposure lock slash flash exposure lock button, then the autofocus point selection button. You use this with the multi-controller to change your autofocus point. In the middle here is the viewfinder, along with the dioptric adjustment knob. And here is the menu button, which takes you to the menus, and the info button. Pressing the info button a few times will bring up settings on the LCD monitor. That's all for the buttons and dials on the 6D body. Let's move into the menus. Before we get started though, if you don't see something that I am covering, don't fret. Not all of the menu items are available in all of the camera's modes. In fact, there are entire menu sections that you won't see in the basic modes. So if you don't see something, but you still wanna play around with the setting, turn your dial over to manual so that you are sure to see everything. The menu is broken down into 15 sections across the top here. Let's start at the beginning with the four sections of the shooting menu. In shooting one, the first menu item is image quality. You press set and can see your options. Here you're controlling your image size and quality. You have the option to shoot in JPEG or RAW or both. Let's start with the RAW settings. You navigate between the RAW settings using the main command dial on the top of the camera. You have RAW, which is a full resolution RAW image. Then you have MRAW for medium RAW and SRAW for small RAW. MRAW and SRAW create reduced resolution image files. You also have this line. This means that a RAW image will not be recorded. 
Now the JPEG options. You navigate through these with the left and right multi-controller buttons on the back of the camera. With these, you have a combination of symbols, letters, and numbers. Let's start with the letter. L is large or high quality, M is medium quality, and S is small or lower quality. Within each of these, you have different compression settings, the symbol. The shark fin looking symbol will provide you with a higher image quality than the stairs symbol. Now S2 and S3 don't have the symbol. They both have the higher quality compression settings. And you also have the line, meaning that a JPEG image will not be recorded. So once you make your choices, you press set. By the way, up top here, you have your settings and file size and the resolution of the image or images, plus the number of exposures you would be able to fit on the memory card with those choices. The next option is beep, where you can prevent the camera from beeping when it finds focus. You have two options, enable and disable. This is one of the first things that I do when I get a new camera. I disable the beep. The next option is release shutter without card. If you forget to put a memory card in the camera, do you want the shutter to still release? If so, choose enable. If not, choose disable. Next is image review. You can choose how long the image will appear on the LCD screen after you take it. You can choose off, which is handy if you're trying to save battery life and don't really need to look at each image after you've taken it. Two seconds, four seconds, eight seconds, or hold, where the image will be displayed until the camera powers off automatically. I talk about auto power off in a few minutes when I cover the setup menu. Now into shooting two. Lens aberration correction is first. When you press set, you will see the lens you have on the camera at the top of the screen and two options at the bottom, peripheral illumination and chromatic aberration. Peripheral illumination corrects vignetting and chromatic aberration prevents color fringing along the line between light and dark. On both of these, you can enable to allow the camera to correct these things or disable to have it do nothing. Next, external speed light control. You may have noticed during the body tour that there is no onboard flash. However, this is where you can control an optional EX series speed light. You have several options here. First is flash firing, where you can disable the speed light entirely. This is handy if you want to use the flash's autofocus assist beam capability, but not the flash itself. Next is ETTL2 meter, where you choose your flash metering mode, either evaluative, which is good in most situations, or average. Flash sync speed in aperture priority mode, where you can set the flash sync speed, you have three options. Flash function settings and flash custom settings are only available when you have a speed light on your camera, and the settings here depend upon which speed light you're using, but you will be able to choose things like flash mode and set up wireless functions. You can also choose to clear all of these settings to return them to the default options. Last in this menu is mirror lockup. Enabling mirror lockup prevents the mirror from flapping, which prevents possible camera shake when a photo is taken. Shooting 3 and 4 will not be available to you if you are in the basic zone modes. They won't even appear. In other modes though, you'll see these. In shooting 3 first. The first menu item here is exposure compensation slash auto exposure bracketing. Here you can use your left and right multi-controller buttons to choose your exposure compensation. You have from minus 5 to plus 5 in one third stop increments. Then you can turn your main dial to choose your auto exposure bracketing range up to plus minus 3 stops. Next is ISO speed settings with multiple options. First is ISO speed, where you choose your ISO number on this scale or auto, where the camera will choose for you. Then you have ISO speed range, where you choose the minimum and maximum ISO sensitivity that you want to be allowed. In auto ISO range, you choose the range that the camera will use in auto ISO. Then you have minimum shutter speed, which is where you can choose the minimum shutter speed the camera will use when auto ISO is active. Next is Auto Lighting Optimizer, where you can have the camera correct the brightness and contrast of an image automatically. You can choose the level of correction, low, standard, high, or off. Then you can press the Info button to check the box to disable Auto Lighting Optimizer when in manual or bulb mode. In White Balance, you can choose the White Balance setting the camera will use. You have nine options, including Auto. And then you have Custom White Balance, where you can create a custom White Balance setting for your light source. This is handy when none of the existing light balance options is giving you a natural look. To begin setting a custom white balance, you must take a photo of a plain white option, such as a white piece of computer paper or a gray card, being lit by the light that you are looking to set for. Then you navigate to it here and press set again for that to be set in the custom white balance slot. Then you can use it when you choose custom white balance in the white balance options. It will remain there until you go back into this menu item and select a different white or gray photo. White balance shift slash bracketing is next. Here you can adjust the white balance on this graph by moving the point around with the multi-controller buttons. Then you can use the multi-controller wheel to choose bracketing. 
When you've made your choices, press set. Now for color space, where you have two choices, sRGB and Adobe RGB. On to shooting four. Picture style changes the characteristics of your photo, like color, sharpness, and contrast. You have auto, where the camera will make a decision for you. Standard, which is an all-purpose style. Portrait, which is good for portraits. Landscape, good for landscapes because it brings out the blues and greens. Neutral, which produces natural tones and is good for photos that will be processed later. Faithful, which is similar to neutral, but is for photos where the color temperature was under 5200 Kelvin. Monochrome, which creates black and white images. In this one, remember that if you're shooting in RAW, your image's color information will be written in the file, but for JPEGs, you will not be able to retrieve the color information. And user-defined 1, 2, and 3. If you press the info button here, you can set the characteristics of each of these user-defined white balance options. Long exposure noise reduction can reduce noise in shots exposed for one second or longer. You can choose off, auto, where the camera will decide if it is necessary to apply, or on, where it will be applied to all photos. High ISO speed noise reduction is next. This will reduce the noise in each image. Your options are disable, low, standard, high, and multi-shot noise reduction. In multi-shot, the camera takes four shots in a burst and merges them into a single JPEG image, further reducing the noise. In Highlight Tone Priority, I can choose Enable, which improves the detail in the highlights of your image. Dust Delete data is for use with Digital Photo Professional and can help erase dust spots from your images that remain on the sensor after normal cleaning. In Multiple Exposure, I have several options. I can Enable or Disable, then choose the Control Method, Additive or Average, then the number of exposures from 2 to 9. Then I choose if I want to do one multiple exposure, then return to normal shooting, or if I want to shoot a multiple exposure every time I press the shutter release button until I come back into this menu item and turn it off. In HDR mode, I choose to disable it or set up the dynamic range. Then, similar to in multiple exposure, I can choose to do one HDR photo or continue taking them until I come back here and turn it off. Then I can choose whether or not I want the camera to automatically align the images for me. And now for the live view shooting menu one. First, you can enable or disable live view shooting. Next, you choose the autofocus method. Flexi zone single, where you choose the autofocus point. Face tracking, where the camera is going to find faces and focus on them. And quick mode, where only 11 autofocus points are available, but you can either choose the autofocus point manually or have the camera choose for you. In grid display, when you choose one of these options, that grid will be displayed on your LCD monitor. Aspect ratio is next, where you can choose the aspect ratio of your live view screen. When shooting in RAW, though, it will always be saved at the 3 to 2 ratio, though it will appear on screen in the selected ratio. Exposure simulation is where the LCD monitor will simulate the brightness of your photo. You can choose to enable it, where the LCD monitor will always show the actual brightness of the image, have the image only show at actual brightness when the depth of field preview button is held down, or disable it, where the LCD monitor will simply be bright so that you can see the image better on the screen. In Live View Shooting 2 now, there is Silent Live View Shooting, where you can choose two different modes to make shooting quieter. In Mode 1, the normal operating noise is less noisy, but you can still shoot continuously. In Mode 2, you can't shoot continuously. When the shutter button is fully pressed, one image will be taken, but if you keep the button pressed, camera operations will be suspended until you lessen up to a half press. As a note here, if you're using flash, silent shooting is disabled regardless of how you have it set here. And then in metering timer, you choose how long the exposure is shown on screen. Moving on to playback one, the first option is protect images. This allows you to protect one, some, or all of the images on your memory card from being deleted. You can choose select images to choose one or more images on the card. When you press set, you're taken to playback and you can press the set button on each image that you would like to protect. When protected, the key icon appears near the upper right of the image. You can also protect all images in folder. You can also unprotect all images in folder. You can protect all images on card or unprotect all images on card. Next is rotate image. When you press set here, you are taken to playback where you can rotate images by pressing the set button. Erase images is next where you can delete images from your memory card. You have select and erase images to choose select images to erase or you can choose all images in folder or all images on card. Remember, this is going to erase the images that are unprotected on your card. Next is print order. Here you can choose images to be printed. 
This only works with printers enabled with the Digital Print Order Format, or DPOF. You can select individual images, choose an entire folder, or choose all images. In Setup, you choose the print type and if you want the date or file number printed on the images. Photo Book Setup is for use with EOS Utility to create a photo book. The setup for this is much the same as the DPOF print order we just went through, where you select certain images from your card or all images for use in the book. In Raw Image Processing, you can process raw images and camera. After choosing the image to process, you have several options. Brightness, Image Quality, where you can set the quality of the edited JPEG image that will be saved here, White Balance, Color Space, Picture Style, Peripheral Illumination Correction, Auto Lighting Optimizer, Distortion Correction, High ISO Speed Noise Reduction, and Chromatic Aberration Correction. Now in Playback 2. In Resize, you can resize your image in camera to make it smaller and save the copy on the memory card. You have four options for downsizing, M, S1, S2, and S3. This option isn't available for images that are originally written as JPEG S3 or RAW. In Rating, you can rate your images individually from 1 to 5 stars. Slideshow allows you to configure a slideshow. The top item is the number of images to be included. Beneath that is Setup, where you choose what will be included and how the slideshow will appear, and Start. The next option is Image Jump with the main dial. When you are using the multi-controller buttons to move between images in playback, you can see each image in order. Here, you choose to have the main dial do something different when turned. It can simply jump one image, it can jump 10 images, 100 images, it can jump to the next date or to the next folder, it can display movies only or stills only, or display by image rating. Now in playback 3. When Highlight Alert is enabled, the overexposed areas of your photo will blink when the photo is displayed in playback. When Autofocus Point Display is enabled, the autofocus point that was used will be highlighted on the photo in playback. In Playback Grid, you can choose to have a grid displayed over the images in playback. In Histogram Display, you can choose if you want a histogram showing brightness or a histogram showing the brightness of each primary color. In Movie Play Count, you select what to display on the playback screen when a movie is in playback recording time and then playback time during playback, or time code. Magnification settings are where you can select the starting magnification and initial position of the image in playback when zooming in on the image. The last option in the playback menu is control over HDMI. This is for use when you have the camera connected to a TV with an HDMI cable that is compatible with HDMI CEC. This option allows you to control the camera's playback operations using the TV's remote control. Setup 1 is next. The first option in Setup 1 is Select Folder. Here you can select a folder for your images to be filed in. You can select one that is already on the list, or you can create a new folder. File numbering determines how your images are numbered. You can have them numbered continuously, no matter if you replace the memory card or create a new folder. One note here is that if you use a card that already has images on it, your numbering may not start from the last image you took. It may instead start from the last image on your memory card. You can have the numbering Auto Reset, which will have your file start from 0001 every time a card is replaced or a new folder is created. Again though, if you insert a card that already has images on it, you may end up not starting at 0001 and instead start with the last image on the card. And last, you can choose Manual Reset, where you can start your file numbering at 0001 in a new folder on the memory card. Auto Rotate is next. You can have images taken in the vertical orientation be shown vertically in playback and on your computer, just on your computer, or not automatically rotate at all. Format Card is where you format your memory card. This erases all information from the memory card. This will even erase images that have been protected. Now for Setup 2. In Auto Power Off, you set the amount of time before the camera will turn off when sitting idle. You have a bunch of time options here, plus Disable, where it will not turn off. Be careful using Disable, though, because it will eat your battery power if your camera is sitting idle. Next is LCD Brightness. Pressing Set will take you to a slider where you can choose the brightness of the LCD screen. LCD Off On button is where you can have the shooting setting display on the LCD monitor remain on or turn off when you have pressed the shutter button. Date Time Zone is next. Here you can set the date and time, the date format, your time zone from a list of cities, and if you want daylight savings time to be calculated. Next, you can choose your language from a list. Next is GPS. Here you select if you want to use the camera's internal GPS, an optional external GPS, or disable the function. 
you can also set up GPS here. In Setup 3 now, Video System is for connecting your camera to a non-HD TV with a cable. You can choose NTSC or PAL. Next, you can enable the Feature Guide. When enabled, a simple description of each item is displayed when you change the shooting mode or use the Quick Control screen. In Info button display options, you choose what is displayed on screen. You can choose any of these, camera settings, electronic level, and shooting functions. You can enable or disable Wi-Fi here. Then you have Wi-Fi function, which is where you set up the onboard Wi-Fi. In Setup 4, first is sensor cleaning. You can enable or disable auto cleaning at startup and shutdown. You can clean the sensor now, or you can clean the sensor manually. This is not available in the basic zone modes, but it allows you to clean the sensor and the camera manually with a blower or other device when the lens is detached. Use extreme caution if you decide to do this. Battery info shows you information on the battery. Certification logo display simply shows you some of the camera's certifications. Next is custom shooting mode. This is where you set up C1 and C2 or clear out those choices. In clear all camera settings, you restore the camera to default settings. In copyright information, you can input and attach your own copyright information to your image files. Firmware version shows you the current firmware information for your body and the lens that is attached. This is also where you update your firmware. Next is the custom functions menu. There's a lot here where you can customize how your camera works. First is custom function 1, exposure. Pressing set, you go to 1, exposure level increments. Pressing set again, you can move down the list to choose whether you want to control exposure in one-third stop increments or one-half stop increments. Then press set to choose. Then you can press the right arrow to move to the next item. Two, ISO speed setting increments, where you choose one-third stop or one-stop increments. In three, bracketing auto cancel, you can choose on, where when you turn the camera off, the auto exposure bracketing and white balance bracketing settings will be cleared, and auto exposure bracketing will be canceled when the flash is ready or if you switch to movie shooting. Or you can choose off, where the auto exposure bracketing and white balance bracketing will remain in effect. Also, auto exposure bracketing will only be temporarily canceled when the flash is ready or when switching to movie shooting. In 4, bracketing sequence, you can change the sequence in which your photos are taken in bracketing modes. In 5, number of bracketed shots, you choose how many images you want taken each time. In 6, safety shift, you can choose shutter speed slash aperture, where the camera will override the manually selected setting in shutter priority and aperture priority to obtain the proper exposure if needed or you can choose ISO speed, where the camera will override the ISO setting to obtain a proper exposure in program, shutter priority, and aperture priority modes. Or you can choose to disable this feature entirely. Next is custom function two, autofocus. First here is one, tracking sensitivity. This allows you to set the sensitivity of the subject tracking in AI servo autofocus for when subjects enter or leave the autofocus point. In two, acceleration slash deceleration tracking you set the sensitivity for subjects that may start or stop suddenly. In 3, AI servo first image priority, you choose how the autofocus behaves for the first shot of continuous shooting. You can choose equal priority, release priority, where the shutter will release even if the subject is not in focus, or focus priority, where the shutter will only release if focus has been achieved. In 4, AI servo second image priority, you choose the same thing but for the successive shots during continuous shooting. In 5, Autofocus Assist Beam Firing, you choose how the Autofocus Assist Beam behaves on your speed light if you have one attached. You have it enabled, disabled, or use only the infrared Autofocus Assist Beam when available. In 6, Lens Drive when Autofocus Impossible, you can choose to have the camera continuously try to find focus, or simply stop when it cannot achieve focus. In 7, Orientation Linked Autofocus Point, you can choose to have a separate autofocus point for horizontal and vertical shooting. In 8, Superimposed Display, you can choose to have the autofocus point not light up in red in the viewfinder when focus is achieved. In 9, Autofocus Micro Adjustment, you can fine tune focus by lens or across the board. Now for Custom Function 3, Operation slash Others. In 1, dial direction during TVAV, you can reverse the direction of the dials for setting shutter speed and aperture during shutter priority and aperture priority. In 2, focusing screen, you can change the focusing screen characteristics for if you change the focusing screen on the camera. Next is 3, multifunction lock. 
Earlier I showed you the lock switch that will lock the main dial, the quick control dial, and the multi-controller buttons. Here you can choose to have any or all of them lock. In 4, Warnings and Viewfinder, you can choose when the exclamation mark appears in the viewfinder. And in 5, Custom Controls, you can change the functions of some of the buttons and dials on your 6D. Last here, you can clear all of these custom functions. The last menu is the My Menu. This one lets you choose your most often used menu items and place them in your My Menu for quick and easy access. In My Menu settings, you can set it up. To choose items to go on the menu, highlight Register to My Menu and press Set. Now you can choose from this list which item you would like to add. You highlight it and press Set and are taken back to the list to choose more. When I'm done, I press the Menu button. Now I can sort the items in my list. I can also delete items here. Additionally, I can choose if I would like for the My Menu to be selected first each time I press the Menu button. That's it! That's all of the Canon 60's body and all of its menus. It was a lot of information. So if you have any questions, your manual is an invaluable resource, but you can always ask me too. You can find me on Facebook or you can email me or just post to the comments. And thanks again to Lumoid for allowing me to borrow the camera. If you guys are interested in renting equipment, there's a link to Lumoid's site in the description of this video.